that. Section 4.2, Maintaining Deliverance. Demons resist being expelled with all their strength and they are just as determined and very persistent to reclaim their lost habitation. It was sin that led them in, but righteousness doing good and not sinning is insufficient to either expel them or keep them from returning. Demons feed on sinful behavior and may voluntarily leave a person whose life does not sustain them. However, strong men are typically bound to their host by covenants or other legal devices and are assigned by the devil to inhibit and destroy their host and will not leave unless forced to. They resist because they may be subject to severe penalties by their master, the devil, for failure to carry out their assignments. So one of their first strategies for returning is to entice their former host to return to their sins or commit new ones. Demons do derive pleasure and sustenance from their association with humans, but it is rare that they are driven off by boredom or hunger. So that's why we see that, right? Like many people, even after, like, uh, if the work of salvation is not uh, complete and somebody just uh, tells them about some part of the gospel or some way like they leave the sin out of their sin out of their self-control they accept jesus but they if they don't fill their life with more godly associations and uh, um you know their um god um uh, godly habits and with the word with uh, asking more of holy spirit and all Many of the people see that how they are again back to their uh, previous sins very quickly. It's very sad, you know, like uh, sometimes uh, deliverance and or the salvation kind of comes at very cost. But uh, we have to um, help even tell in any People, we are giving gospel also, or we are uh, concerned for somebody in our lives, even it sometimes may be our own household members. We cannot say that out of our own convenience, we will say, or I just told them it is their responsibility. They have to do it. But we should little bit stretch ourselves and try to help them to come to a place where they are... Uh, their time and their uh, associations around are filled with right things so that they don't easily go back. There is this one guy I know and uh, he uh, he is in this uh, slum area. So he has, he, he is a driver of some DCM or some kind of vehicle, big vehicle like that. And he has this uh, bad habits of alcohol and um, they chew tobacco, right? So that also, all his teeth are brown. And his brother actually comes to church. Uh, and what happened, this guy is come nowhere near uh, God. Like he is, he doesn't accept in Jesus or anything. And he ha he's... Um, had an illegal relationship with a married woman. Married, but she is separated though. And she has kids, but he ha he got this relationship into her and uh, all these bad habits, bad friends, and all that. And one day, some fight happened with some people who tried to, you know, shouted him the, about that woman. And he tried to just scare them using um, uh, petrol and uh, a matchstick. But by, someone else did that or it, what happened, we don't know. But the, actually the fire got lit and he was burnt very badly. In a way, like most of that kind of uh, burns, it was all on back. And in the front, it was uh, neck and mostly the back, it is the whole. And generally, it's very hard for them to live 
if it is more than 50 percent bonds generally people don't live and this guy is nearly there uh, it was so bad like it took uh, three four months in the hospital for him to get completely out of hospital with that and you can understand right the burnt pains they are so bad and he is not in a fancy hospital because he's from from slum area like he's in a government hospital where the things are very poor right they don't care if he shouts and screams they tried to help him too actually because they also are humans and they know burnt pains are bad but he was still screaming like i visited him in the hospital two times and his uh, he is like uh, completely repenting all the time in that hospital the brothers there are two brothers that go to church they are visiting and um, he told me sister like uh, i please pray for me he was screaming please pray for me i have to live if i live i will never go back to that life again i will not uh, um you know i will not uh drink i will not um i will just i'm willing to live the life for jesus after this if i live if i live i will just go anywhere and even um you know give my life to the service of jesus and all that i i don't i don't stay nearby where he stays i it was very far even that hospital for me but uh, i went to pray for him and um Uh, tell him things but in that experience what happened is it looked like see the the burnt pains are not just one day pain or two days pain or even 10 day pain right understand three months it is so it should have done some strong work in there and three months he would have been de-addicted also right three months he did not uh, take anything while he is in hospital in that on that bed and uh, once he is but still like i we all thought his family and even i thought wow even though he is almost near this uh, death and all and pain we don't want him anybody to see in that pain but it was it was turned for his good that uh, he can now still live freely and he even told that he will never uh, look at that woman again and all that but the power of sin is also so strong see slowly he went back after that to his own place right so slowly he will meet the same friends and uh, he should have probably we all should have strongly stopped him going into the same kind of job or that like so church is only once in a week right and he is not very educated literate so he he did not understand the word much to read or to sit in the church and understand properly so there is kind of nothing much so slowly the even the same evil spirits who left him he was properly he saved he got he, he enjoyed the joy in christ they started family prayers in the house also and he started attending them but very sadly like uh, he returned back to the old state he goes to he went back and he even married that woman same woman and he got himself a child with her too and he got back to that habits he got back to the same friends he got back to the um, tobacco chewing and stuff and he comes to church like once a year on christmas means he know that okay jesus saved my life but that uh, but it is very much possible for um, all to go back with the same state so it's very very important to see that to protect not only i mean that, that i think that is why like uh, Jesus first called out his disciples from the world and they had to have enough fellowship with Jesus and then he sent them out to the world so when they are new christians or new believers or newly somebody repents of their sins and they strongly come they are delivered and they come right so it is important that um, they first 
cut the world, isolate themselves and they have proper fellowship and fill their times with all godly people around them and uh, right friends. Even in uh, when I was uh, a Christian first, I had all friends, none of them are, are Christians from my college. I did not understand when, when God told that uh, I cannot uh, be their uh, best friend like I was. He gave me a clear message that uh, I cannot. But I did not understand. They are very nice people and uh, um, all and they understand me and there is no problem. Why is will God tell like this to cut uh, friendships if they are not Christians? But it was, uh, I had to, but slowly I understood that actually when I was their best friend, we all are doing some stuff like uh, uh, we are not going to classes sometimes. One of the friends will say, hey, let us go go out. I do, I'm not feeling uh, to attend classes today. Let us go out and eat. And to to because of that friendships, right, we don't want to hurt each other or we support each other and uh, we please each other as friends so to in uh, so to please each other i am not really um doing everything according to god's will so i i am using my time and my resources differently right so which is not good for me probably i am so once pro i am in a state where i i kept god first and uh, friends or any other unbelievers are not able to influence my decisions of uh, uh, how I use my time. And I can clearly say no when I have to say no. Probably that is the time God gave me the freedom to have the same friends back. So uh, because when we become strong, then we can influence others and we go back and we can tell them gospel and do the work of God. But when we are very new, we are weak, we don't have the strong foundation yet. We did not say ourselves grow much, then we cannot help others, but we will actually be influenced easily by others. That's why how much ever we are uh, very excited to know Jesus and take back the same gospel to the people who are around us and who are in the same sins, better first we have to hear that from God to tell us to go. Or uh, if he tells, this is the time, yes, go, then, then it is good, he is with us. Otherwise, we have to first fill our time and um, uh, space, that space which is left with all about God. Defenses section. God in his wisdom anticipated man's need for protection from demonization and provides us with ready-made multi-layered defensive system to protect us. This is composed of the following elements. Explo expulsion mechanism. The human soul has a functional feature that when activated by the will detaches demons from within binds, compresses and ejects demons from the body. Countenance aura, aura, also called the aura, it is an extension of the soul that surrounds the body. The countenance has a number of functions, one of which is to prevent attachment by and entry of demons into the body. The classic way is observed is using Kirlian photography. Mm -hmm. I also am new to this. I never did. I probably we have to Google and see this later. Individual covering. There are a variety of mantles and coverings that augment the countenance and increase the protection from demonization. Guardian angels. When a person becomes a believer in Christ, God assigns a guardian angel to guide and protect the believer. There may be more than one such angel present as the numbers are increased or decreased as threats to the believer increase or subside. There is at least one guardian angel and they are strictly prohibited by God from interfering with the person's will. Thus, they cannot protect people from things to person chooses to open themselves up to. Congregate covering. When a believer joins a genuine congregation of other Christians, they receive additional protection that varies with the spiritual state 
of that congregation or regional ecclesiastical authority. So um, along in this lines, uh, one of my uh, pastor in one of the church uh, told that uh, one is supposed to have covering from multiple sides, like someone above them who is like authority to them should be praying for them, like a parent or pastors or uh, their spiritual teachers, somebody like them that are above them in authority is covering from above and someone uh, below them that means they are giving teaching to somebody it could be their kids or uh, they are taking a small group study then the people who are taking their teaching or uh, someone like that and uh, side covering that is the friends or the same hmm, brothers and sisters who are around them so that is uh, the one. So if all these three levels pray for somebody, then they are more protected is what that pastor told. <clears throat> I don't know, just uh, throwing out what I heard somewhere. Expulsion function. Demons are regularly slipping through our external defenses and this function normally just as routinely expels them. Most people are unaware of its activity since it usually functions autonomously in the case of minor trespassing demons. When a demon acquires a soul tie with us by willful sin, the demon also acquires a privileged status whereby the function recognizes the demon as part of our being and, not, and does not automatically expel them. In such cases, the decision to sin must be repented of and the demon expelled by an act of will that severs the soul tie. As a person sins in that area of an expertise of the demon, the demon grows tentacles and entwines itself about the soul of the person. Restitution for the sin then may become necessary to disentangle these tentacles before the ejection function can work. The person harms or is harmed by others in this area, these tentacles acquire barbs or hooks. Okay. I think this is all more like uh, how our immunity of the body works too, like Sometimes there's uh, there this viruses, right? For example, why our body does not uh, reject some of them is like it pro it assumes that it is uh, it does not recognize it as our immunity does not recognize it as a foreign body because it disguises themselves or it travels actually with our own cells, blood cells or something, and it hides itself and all that. <clears throat> So the soul ties are uh, like that, that can, uh, if uh, there is a um, legal authority for demon because of the sin we made or because of the soul tie, the other person that is in the soul tie makes willfully a sin and uh, they travel and our, uh, this expulsion function will not recognize it. And that's why the, the it's like how antibiotics or antiviral should work our uh, repentance and uh, opposite action for that has to work and the more late the more uh, damage right even in our body with the diseases the same thing with spiritual things i guess so countenance we saw the um for uh, cain right it's more about how sin can create opportunity to for the countenance to decrease. That means that how like if we eat sugar, automatically our body immunity decreases and the same virus or bacteria that is in the environment, probably if we don't eat sugar, like it cannot enter us. But um, once we eat sugar, I, I heard in some video that for the first uh, few hours of eating a spoon of sugar, our immunity just drops 50% uh, down. And that is the time where the same environmental um, <clears throat> bacteria or viruses can attack us. That's why most of the times we say that we get cold or something we after eating uh, something sugary or drinking sugary juice. Everybody thinks that drinking cold juice can bring. It's not just plain cold. Most of the times the cool drinks or 
all this contains high sugars because we are taking sugars with cold we are creating good environment for the bacteria or virus to work right the similar way it is the sin that will decrease this immunity and let the evil spirit center the countenance is the first external line of defense so yeah weakened by sin trauma or ritual abuse the harm takes time to heal if ever demons enter in through flaws and weaknesses in the countenance they are highly opportunistic and a person may safely assume that demons are not only ready to exploit an opportunity but will work diligently to enlarge or even create one it is very difficult to be engaged in the broader society around us and keep from sinning and being exposed to conditions that create opportunities for them to re-enter. For even if a person maintains their own righteousness, people they are closely connected may sin and create opportunities for demonization through soul ties. Close proximity to the body can bypass the countenance. For those who weak or breached countenance as touching, holding hands, kissing or common ways of bypassing the countenance. Exchanging defiled jewelry and clothing in another way to do so. There are many, I mean, I don't know about this. Like, I don't have personal experiences. But there are people I know who believe in this. They don't use others' clothes. They don't exchange unless they know that other person is very good Christian and they love them and they want to even love to take the impartation from them if possible. Then they take their clothes or they ask their clothes even to give as a gift rather than old clo uh, new buying new clothes or new shoes or their jewelry. So, um, but there are people they are very sensitive, so they don't uh, they even felt bad dreams when taking with this clothes, so they don't take if they don't believe in somebody. The act of sexual intercourse completely bypasses the countenance and permits a vertebral flood of demons to be exchanged between individuals. Therefore, it is very important to repair, maintain, and strengthen the countenance and avoid activities which compromise it. To, to this end, a recently delivered person should assert, set aside some time and engage in activities that promote healing of the countenance. First among things are repentance and reconciliation. This is why, see, even if we don't know this much uh, deep, uh, indirectly, like all the churches, they all say, right, like the main thing they say is about repentance, how to be away from sin, how to get close, all the churches. That's why they uh, promote uh, more time to spend with God, with word, and uh, all that. Time spent and confessing and repenting of sin is very valuable and effective. Also effective are efforts to contact by telephone or letter people who have been sinned against to apologize and offer restitution. Means like uh, we have to, if possible, wherever we have to correct whatever we did. For example, if we steal somewhere and then after we that we... Um, uh, because of stealing a sin, like we gave chance for evil spirits, right? So it says that even if, uh, I mean, when we repent, go back and uh, give what you stole or pay for what you stole. And even more, you have to pay according to word if possible, right? So forgiveness is among the top activities necessary to repair and remain the countenance. A person must forgive those who have harmed them and then seek forgiveness for those they have harmed. Next most effective is devotional time spent in studying the scripture, prayer, fasting and worship. And even like before they said also, right, automatically by having a proper lifestyle as a Christian, we are not giving a right environment for any evil spirit so they won't stay. They cannot stay. So that's kind of a summary as much as so before knowing all this knowledge, people may think that uh, why, I mean, I cannot spend so much. It's hard for me. We may not give that much priority just because a pastor told to us to do or friends told us to do. But knowing this information like this kind of uh, gives us like we automatically understand the more value of it because we understand what happens in spiritual realm if we know if we don't do 
it's like this right if child is uh, saying that i don't want to brush today and we have to tell them slowly that how germs will attack and give them some picture of uh, what will happen if they don't brush so that will give that enough understanding for the kid to themselves get ready to okay then that, that means i have to brush so the kid will visualize or imagine their germs dying and it actually happens also even though it's all microscopic but it happens so but some kids they just continue to do even if the because the parents just told them to do so they'll just brush out of habit and they are free from germs so that's how many christians even though they don't have the knowledge of all this they are free from all evil spirits and demons because of their obedient lifestyle to god so call folk in the order here recommends a proven regimen is to and half hours of praise each day at three hour intervals for a month or until a person can routinely resist temptation and sleep without being reinfected by demons a daily regimen of praise should be maintained thereafter as the 618 says violence shall not still be heard in your land or wasting and ruin within your borders but you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise Sal salvation and gates they are our wall salvation and praise they are our walls and gates kind of protection right guy okay, missed something important here i guess let me see mm. a basic deliverance process should be rot routinely repeated alone or with assistance until all overt ex evidence of demonization demonization is gone after that it is important to keep clean this should be a daily exercise just like bathing even more important is to fill places vacant vacated by the demons fill that place with holy spirit right salvation by faith does much to repair the breaches and weaknesses in the countenance so that demons cannot enter in through this however there are number of gates that must also be strengthened such as this the five senses the body is like the fortified city of jerusalem and typically had 12 gates in the spirit and revelation 21 10 to 12 when he carried me in spirit onto a great and high mountain and showed me the great city holy jerusalem coming down out of the heaven from god having the glory of god and its light was like a very precious stone as a jasper stone being crystal clear as crystal and having a great and high wall having 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names having been inscribed which are of the 12 tribes of the sons of israel okay let us uh, today probably pray for this and close yeah there is um after repentance restitution or forgiveness suitable prayer to expel the demons and secure the gate is as follows let us do this lord jesus son of david you are the one who shuts and no one can open who opens and no one can shut as in isaiah 22 22 i give you all that i am and yield to you the gates of my spirit cast out any and all gatekeeper demons from your vessel only your spirits may open and shut the gates of my spirit for you have the key of the house of david therefore secure the gates of this vessel against your enemies and open it to your spirits please appoint guardian angels as needed to secure my gates and strengthen them for this work put in me a spirit of praise and worship that i may gladly honor you and keep this your vessel secure amen let us do this prayer to about the angels heavenly father we thank you for your provision and protection and for all the angels you assign to protect and prosper us and what is ours 
we grant them permission to request and receive from you every strategy, resource, and power necessary to fulfill your perfect will for our life and to protect us in what is ours from the plans, deceives, thefts, predations, attacks, diversions, and other activities of the devil and his agents. They may also take all necessary measures to guide and protect us and all our dependents and those under our care and protection, including proactive, defensive, and offensive activities. Mm. This includes appropriating, destroying, and taking captive any and all resources of the devil and his agents. Grant them as the angels all functions, abilities, skills, powers, and other measures to defend against spiritual, mental, and physical harm. Grant them the means to jam mechanics, dull and turn sharp points and edges, deflect or stop projectiles, shield from all forms of radiation, neutralize poisons, acids, bases and other harmful substances. Grant them the ability to ward off extreme temperature, pressure, excessive force, energy, light and darkness of all kinds. Make them able to ward off abnormal emotions, confusion, and all other mental troubles and errors, and to prevent and correct any faulty perceptions. Give them all means to align, correct, repair, replace, and augment every spiritual, mental, and physical quality of the human being. Mm. Yes, Lord. Endow them with knowledge understanding, wisdom, and presence of mind as befits their station. Let them not be lacking or in excess of anything needful or useful to their service to you in their opposition to the devil and his agents. Grant them also such peace, joy, honor, and pleasure in their work as befits their station and you do. Amen. Yeah. We can think we can do this as well. This is Holy Spirit baptism. Prayer asking for Holy Spirit. And this is this eight uh, spirits of the mind, then covering mantles and cores. Cleansing positions is the next thing that will not be doing today. Okay, let us um, do tomorrow from section congregate covering.